Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is my reaction video to the 2022 Suzuki Hayabusa. So one thing I really love about the way Suzuki announced the 2022 Hayabusa is the timing of it. They let all the other manufacturers do their big announcements, their virtual tours, all that fun stuff for their, all their 2021 um, motorcycles. And Suzuki was just kind of a month, I think, has gone by since Harley's done their lineup release. Kawasaki did their lineup release. And then, boom. Quiet, you hear a pin drop, and there's your Busa. The 2022 Hayabusa. They've got all the attention. Everybody else is done already. So, they're the last ones to release a new model bike. And everybody's talking about it. Everybody's focused on it. They've got all the attention to themselves. It's kind of like this video. I must be the last one on the internet to do a reaction video for the 2022 Hayabusa. So there it is. I love the way Suzuki planned that and thought that through. So let's start off with the most obvious, the aesthetics. I really, really love what they've done with the Gen 3. I was a big fan of the Gen 1 when it came out. And uh, when they redid the aesthetics and then released the Gen 2, I was not really excited about all those curves. I didn't really like the tail section, most of all. The front wasn't bad, but the way they kind of piecemealed a couple of different sections, it was like curves on top of curves. And the way the rear kind of sloped forward a little bit, I just, I just wasn't a big fan of the aesthetics on the Gen 2. But man, do I really love what they've done with the Gen 3. It actually kind of reminds me of a more refined Gen 1. It's kind of like they went back to basics and what worked for them the best with the very first release of the Busa and just refined it, sharpened the lines a little bit. And uh, I love the crisp orange black combination. Um, really beautiful machine. So let's talk about the next piece of news here and that is the engine. The engine displacement has been bumped up to 1340 cc's makes a claimed 187 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, now, a lot of people are going to say that um, that's disappointing because it's down from last year's, its predecessor, which made, I think, 196 and 114 pounds of, of torque. Maybe it was 194 horsepower. It was more, but not that much more. The big news here is it meets Euro 5 emission standards. So people in Europe can now buy the Hayabusa again. It's been a number of years since the Hayabusa has been on the market in Europe because of uh, not being able to meet emission standards. So um, this is a common theme we see. Engine displacements getting jacked up as they constrict the exhaust more and more. They've got to do something different. So uh, 1,340 cc's. Now the part that I'm really excited about is it makes its peak horsepower and torque at a lower RPM. So for people that are gonna be riding this bike on the street, the horsepower is more usable, it's more rideable. Um, it's claimed that the roll-on from six gear at a low RPM is um, dramatically improved over the predecessor. So the bike's more rideable. And let's face it, man, for you guys that are gonna be taking this thing to the drag strip, you're gonna drop it down and lower it, you're gonna put the extended swing arm on it, you're gonna pull all the emissions off. And right out of the gate, you're gonna be over 200 horsepower with just some bolt-ons. And then once you unlock the electronics, you'll probably be at uh, 210, 215, just a wild guess. So once you throw the turbo on and you start doing internal modifications, you're gonna be, you know, 225, 230. You're gonna, you're gonna have some big numbers. This bike's gonna be huge at the drag strip. All right, so the next thing we need to talk about is the electronics package on this bike. Uh, Suzuki has fitted the 2022 Hayabusa with all of the electronics you could ever imagine. We're talking 10 stage traction control. Why do you need 10 stages of traction control? I don't know. 10 stage traction control, 10 stage wheelie control. Um, I don't think like six different power modes. Three of them are presettable. Three of them are hard coded into the system. You've got hill descent, rider aids just all over the place. Um, for me personally, I think it's a bit overkill. And as long as they allow the rider to completely customize all the power codes, um, all the electronic rider aids, as long as everything is customizable, um, then I'm okay with it. But it does seem to be a bit much. I think the manufacturers are getting a little carried away with all these uh, rider aids. But like I said, as long as you can customize them, as long as you have control over them, 
it's a good thing. Now I do love the fact that they've got the dual stage up and down quick shifter. That's super, super nice. So you've got the auto blips on your down shifts and you've got the quick shift for the up shifts. Super cool. Um, yeah, it's got a really nice expansive electronic rider aid package. All right, let's talk about the instrument cluster. I really am a big fan of both TFT displays and the old school analog clocks as like some people like to call them. Um, I find it interesting that Suzuki has chosen to kind of combine the two. I really like their clock display. Um, I love the fact that it's got a fuel gauge. You've probably heard me complain about that bike more than once in numerous videos over the years about it not having a fuel gauge. So I love the fact that they've, they've actually got a, a legit clock fuel gauge on the motorcycle. I'm gonna use that if I get one for sure 100%. Now, I kind of question the ability to put a functional TFT display in the center. There's just not a lot of room when you've got the speedometer, the tachometer, you've got your water temp, and you've got your fuel gauge on the far left and right. And then you've got this little TFT display in the center. So I, we'll have to see how usable that is. Um, I really like the way the Yamaha R1 uses the full TFT display to be able to configure your power modes, all your rider aids and your electronics. I'm not sure how well that's going to work on that little tiny TFT display they've got there sandwiched in between their, their uh, clock clusters. So we'll see. I do love the way it looks. I just hope it's functional. So the last piece I want to talk about, which I am most excited for, is the potential for the Hayabusa to be a really, really great sport touring bike, obviously with the emphasis on sport. But with the ride by wire and all the new electronics comes bona fide cruise control. Now, you know me, I'm not a huge fan of ride by wire and the whole idea of my wrist not being connected to the throttle bodies doesn't really give me a warm, fuzzy feeling. But if I get cruise control, real bona fide cruise control with that, I love it. So um, many of you know that I rode the ZX-10 for an eight day trip out to Cali and back and um, I could not have done that without the throttle lock. So to have a real bona fide cruise control very, very exciting. Um, the Hayabusa, bigger bike, a little bit more room to move around, handlebars up a little bit higher. It's not a pure track bike, don't get me wrong, not that you couldn't take it to the road race track and not that you couldn't put down some heater laps with a really, really skilled rider at the helm, but that's not the point. The point is, with the improved mid-range power, with um, the new aesthetics, I mean, you're gonna be sport touring in comfort, well, maybe not comfort, but um, more comfort than that. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, if you imagine the scale with on the left, you've got touring kind of an adventure. On the right, you've got things like ZX-10s, pure sport bikes, pure track bikes, R1s, these kinds of things. If you look at right in the middle, bikes like the Yamaha, um, FJR, Honda CBF 1000, um, BMW's R1200, I think these bikes probably straddle the sport touring smack dab in the middle. They're really comfortable. They've got a lot of amenities for touring, but they're still very aggressive looking, still very sporty bikes, high performance. I think they probably find the balance of sport touring better than anything else out there, to be honest. That said, I'm not looking to straddle that line 100%. I kind of lean over to the uh, sport side of things, right? So um, obviously something like ZX-10 and an R1 all the way extreme to the right. So I think the Hayabusa kind of brings that needle back to the left, maybe not center like a CBF or an FJR, but somewhere in between the ZX-10 R1 category and the FGR CBF 1000, those bikes right there, you've got something like a Hayabusa. Um, so that's super exciting. And if you go a little bit farther to the left, you got bikes like a, a Yamaha um, Tracer 900 GT. And to me, um, it's classified as a sport touring bike, but you don't have a lot of sport. You've got a little bit of adventure, mostly touring, um, very little sport. And then you come back over, you hit that FJR 1200, you hit that BMW R1200, and... Um, on your way to the ZX-10, you just you stop at the Hayabusa, go for a trip. So that's gonna wrap up this reaction video for the 2020 
to Hayabusa. Let me know what your favorite new thing is. Is it the fact that it's a Euro 5 emissions compliant uh, sport bike that now is going to hit the market and no, no, you're shaking no, no, your no, head. No. <laughs> okay, okay. Wasabi doesn't like that. If I was uh, in the comments, it's no. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. So, yeah, is it the Euro 5? Is it the new aesthetics, which I'm a huge fan of, man. I love the way the bike looks now. And let's see, what else is there? Is it the new electronics, the rider aids? Maybe you don't care about Euro 5 because you live here in the United States and you can still buy boosts. Um, but maybe you're excited to get a new one that's got all the new electronics, cruise control and all the rider aids, which, man, there's a lot of rider aids. I'm going to try and list them on the screen, but there's a whole bunch of them. Um, what else is there? Um, I think that's about it, right? I mean, we've got the engine revisions, Euro 5 compliance, the aesthetics, um, the new electronic package. Do you like the TFT display combined with the clocks? Um, I like it. We'll see how well it works, but yeah, leave a comment down below. What's your favorite new thing about the Busa? Uh, maybe you like the fact that it's a little bit heavier. It gained five pounds. I don't know. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.